live. Do we have music? Do I sound like Ryan from uh, Sports Card Radio? I'm just trying to get 800 people in the chat. <laughs> I just hear. I'm just trying to trick people into. Uh, <laughs> it's a I just hear music in the background. Yeah, yeah. Can you I hear music? Oh, okay. Yeah, we're, we're I gotta live. stream this. Hey, we're live. We're live. I gotta stream this to my audience. Oh, okay. Hey, we could have got close if you would have stayed on uh, two weeks ago when the SGC nose bro broke literally 30 seconds after oh, we got off the air. Yeah, you were you were running the exclusive that night. Yeah, I was pushing 500 people. That's a lot. That's because I had 100 different accounts watching. I was trying to give you as much exposure as possible there. Hey, I texted you and said hop on, and you're like, nah, bro, I got to go to bed. I was, in be I was literally in bed. Yeah, I was just like, bro, can't do it. Well, first I texted you and I said, PSA and SGC are one now. And you texted oh. me back, what? <laughs> I got to do the go live on Instagram too. Hold on. Oh, oh. All right. We're on, I, think we're on things. I think we're if on it's Instagram. Not broke, don't... It's 2021. I mean, 20, <laughs> we're in the 21st century. I think, I think I did that right. Yes. Somebody joined. So are right, we the only ones that can are we the only ones that can hear this music or can the people hear this music? I don't know. Can the people in the chat hear the music? Hear Beautiful the music. We've got Kurt's card care to talk about tonight. Cleaning. Not really Kurt's card care, but just card cleaning in general. We'll touch on it. Steve's gonna rage on somebody, probably. No, I can't. Topics. And then also, I don't know if you guys saw, I kind of put it in my background. You might see these come through. These are backdoor copies from Tops of our own influencer cards. I didn't announce them publicly, which was a little awkward, I think. But you might see those come out of the woodwork. And those are, uh, they may or may not be licensed cards. So you look way too much like Leo DiCaprio. <laughs> Why, in the, in uh, the card? In the card. You're blocking mine. But... Well. Oh, hey, look. <laughs> it's like Tom Hanks, Steve. Oh, yeah, a little bit. And then, um, I don't know, Brendan only had like a, a child picture for Neo. So yeah, I, mean, yeah. I look like, like a toddler. That's the, that's the Beetlejuice <laughs> version. I got done dirty. <laughs> that's the Beetlejuice version. I've got to pan over to Instagram, too, and see if anyone has... Okay, so there's joiners. We got, we got some joiners, but no comments yet. Okay, well, hey, whatever. Instagram absolute disaster yeah the instagram so the instagram comments don't come over here we won't be able to see those so i'll check hey, back over to see if there's any hate comments that you we are lacking in the technical department man your content needs to be better well, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel about that steve man you got you got fired up i feel great let's say hello to my chest billy, billy joe billy joe actually commented early Chatting early, so don't forget. Are you guys going to make these available to us peons? Wrap them into the national giveaway somehow. $10 for a set of three. Let's go. I think he's talking about the backdoor tops influencer cards that may or may not make it out into the public. We'll have to see. Speaking of the national, my my week, my bi-weekly leadoff question. Dustin, do you have lodgings booked for the national? I'm gonna I think I might just wing it. I might just sleep in the car. <laughs> just drive a camper. Yeah, I'm just gonna drive the egg and figure it van out. Life it. Then you could then you could then you could post van life YouTube videos. Those things get like millions of views. Yeah, we're gonna oh, yeah. do camper vlogs. That's my third channel. That'll be coming out. So you, you, you need, you need to be like a, a card show vlogger, but you travel yeah. around in a van. Well, I you just could, think you could just mix all the mediums. I think the channel name should just be I'm living out of my car. And then just every single video is just in my car. And it's just, and maybe I've got some clothes in the back seat, you know, kind of filling up the back seat, and that's the backdrop. I've got all of the ideas, all sorts of ideas, guys. <laughs> all right, TJ, where's Dustin's card? Can't be the first one. It doesn't look much like you. On a real note, these are cool for you guys, but from a collector standpoint, I'd rather take a national park comment. <laughs> okay. Brendan, the artist for the tops cards. Good evening. Put a nail in the Kurtz card care debate tonight for the greater good. LOLs. Uh, I don't think it's going to be us that's going to be driving any nails into that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so either. But Neo, Neo, I heard, I heard Neo, you the PCC on your uh, crack outs. 
<laughs> me. Yeah, for some edge fixing. Well, I got uh, I got all these cards here. Like I dropped off forty five cards to be subbed, and in, uh, in Philly, but I'm already building up my raw card stock. The problem is like I'm falling behind because I'm waiting for my new Kurtz card care kit to come in. So I can't. I thought you were Mr. Minty those. guy. Yeah. I thought you were Mr. Minty. Yeah, I do. I got the Mr. Minty pack. He gave it to uh -huh. me at the national. It was like a free give, free give me. I use like the magnifier. Well, not much anymore. The magnifier and it's small, so it's good to carry. But I have my big magnifier I use at home. We weren't going to say anything, but we are working on an off-centered card kit, card care kit that's wrapped in an NFT, which is also wrapped in a RAS. So no, it's it's kind it, of the trifecta. No, no, what it does but you is buy it in a repack, so you don't know which part of the yeah. kit you're going to get. What, what the, what the off-centered <laughs> kit does, it doesn't fix scratches. It doesn't fix uh, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't fix color. It, it doesn't, doesn't fix, fix anything. Any what it fixes is it fixes your cards that are off-centered. So you kind of just put in this little thing, and it shifts the borders, right? <laughs> All we can do is fix the centering. You know what you know what the kit should be you know the centering tool it should be one of the centering tools but it's set off centered yeah it's just set to the right a little bit it's, it's set to 60 40 like the Wemby 101 kind of like that one of one it's psa 10 baby that's a psa 10 baby 60 40 all day hey, long man, they put a new image out today. that thing looks tight dude if that's a 10 then i'm sending back all all the nines are going back because if that's a 10 then everything i've got is a 10. All right, uh, Michael Ham in the chat. Michael Ham, we need to work on lodgings for the next time we have this call. We need to have that figured out. I agree. Actually, the national is what three, four months away now, so we need to kind of sort this out. I gotta sort anything out. My 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 plan has been sorted since the day they announced Cleveland. Big smooth coming in hot. Yeah, no. Neo decided that he was going to throw down the gauntlet for all grading companies to respond to him today. <laughs> Grading companies, I demand answers from you. Hmm. Hey, PSA put out a statement. I think it was probably directly towards... I'm surprised it didn't tag you on it. <laughs> the Reg. Dustin won't be able to keep up. I'm actually 9.05. Oh, I'm already nine minutes behind. Hold on. Let's see where we're at. Oh, we, started, we started okay. 10 minutes late, so really you're only four minutes behind. Oh, okay. There we go. Oh, yeah. Orlando. I referenced Orlando in my video today. It came out a few hours ago talking about the fact that he has a graded card that had a stain on the back that was cleaned that looked perfectly fine that ended up coming back later on like a ghost coming they back. Used, they used the, the off-centered kit instead of the Kurtz card fair. Yeah, they didn't use the right kit, apparently. Phoenix Rising, what's going on? The amount of free marketing, Kurt. Kurt has gotten <laughs> his, his business, yeah his business just tripled the debate Let's died self-cleaning cards like a self-cleaning oven self-cleaning cards what is a slab magic kit haven't heard of that one you don't need the full kit just get the spray and the cloth that's for your graded slabs but re-slabbing a card fifteen dollars so good price I don't know what a slab magic kit is but i know what a slab mag is dustin and i'm gonna need you to send me one of those gold and black custom made sports card dad i gotta run a test on it so it's for testing purposes it's for content purposes i'll send it back to you but we're gonna put one of these slab mags to the test um i'm not gonna throw it in the pool i promise but uh well what if i was thinking that what else would you do throw it in jacuzzi no, 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 no. SGC couldn't recover from that pool video so much. They had to sell the company to Collector's Universe. Yeah. So <laughs> I think so, it was uh, the way that Steve threw it in. He like threw the SGC. He like threw it really hard. And it, I, I was just like, why did Steve throw the SGC one harder? It didn't make any sense. But anyway. well, didn't you do a test on a BGS slab a while back with a Larry Bird star card? Well, accidental test where it flew off the back of my car and then I ran, I chased after it, but it got run over by a truck, literally. Yeah, I, watched I was going to comment survive. on your video today because you said you never cracked the card out before and that wasn't true because you cracked out that Larry. You actually, before. hold on, hold that thought. Uh -oh. <laughs> Maybe he cracked it, just not cracked it out. Yeah. So hey, guys, if anybody who watched my video today Dustin doesn't know what the card is yet because he says that he stopped watching when it got to that part because it's not, it was supposed to arrive in the mail today, but I guess it won't arrive until tomorrow. So we can't ruin what the card is. 
Well, yeah, I heard I had you like Saints. Well, I heard kind of like Saints. I don't know if it's a Saints oh, card. You heard but... me say Saints? Yeah, but I don't know if you okay. understand like he's a Saints collector, so I assumed it's a Saints card. But yeah, yeah. I cut it off right there. Mm -hmm. I cut it off. Um, Neo skin looks gorgeous. Is he applying Kurt's card care after shaving? Kurt, Kurt's going to have a whole new brand of stuff now. He's going to have to branch out. Maximus yeah, so he, he, <laughs> he should have like Maximus the and stuff and like body wash and spray for card shows. Yeah, what's that one brand that's on everything? It's like the trimmers. What is that? They sponsor everything. What is it? Uh, oh, I figured you already been deep in talks with them. I know, I've already reached out to Manscaped. I haven't locked that in yet, but I would Manscaped would be hilarious to do one, do a sponsor with them. Yeah, Kurt's Card Care is going to take over, like challenge Manscaped here soon. Michael Stone, what's going on? Bargain Boxer in the house, <laughs> B side on the beat. I don't, I, I don't know if he does this one too, but what's going on good but yeah appreciate that i was i was sick the last well still kind of recovering over the last few days but neo as well are, are you it's embracing the uh no face cam videos now or are you just gonna go full on tilt no the one i, I put out a few hours ago that that was i, I just watched cam. that one yeah that I, i'm not gonna do I'm, that's not for me you, i convinced swaggle house he mixes them and now he told me it was the greatest gift i ever gave him what did, what did you do just, just do like a screen screen, screen. just do like a screen share stream yard thing oh i mean not to say that i'll never do it again but i'll probably stick with the alf background and the paintings and all that stuff that's kind of my deal i mean the video you did earlier wasn't that your regular background yeah yeah i just did oh. it regularly but the last two days i just did kind of like a backdrop like a like a screen share backdrop not on camera so i, I was feeling awful where is Daisy's card? Ray asks. Yeah, the, the, those trading cards aren't out yet. I'm trying to figure out a way to see how I can get them on paper and not just digital, you know, not just digital slash NFT style. <laughs> They're going to be Daisy NFTs and it's going to be a I'm trying to, I'm trying to get them on some sort of nice stock <laughs> that still keeps the shine and things like that. It, it's tough to find somebody that actually prints and does that type of stuff. God, I, I really some... would love. I'd love for you to go heal, Steve, and just do a, a Daisy NFT rug pull. Please do that in 2024. <laughs> well, I had a, a designer lined all up, and we had some plans going on and stuff. And then they were like, "Well, I'll get back with you and let you know if it's a project I want to take on." And then they just completely like ghosted me on Instagram. So it's kind of like starting all over again. Like, was it so... one of those logo companies that was trying to sell you a? Logo? No, it's a, it's somebody that actually makes custom cards and they sell them on ebay and everything else they do really nice work oh okay um, and they were going to be able to make the kaboom style stuff and the downtown style stuff we're shooting you know we're shooting for a, a downtown card that's actually the 302 that would be the name of it the Steve's 302 and it would be Steve me and a whole daisy. bunch of stuff the daisy only fans link into the oh chat. no daisy's got the color blast the, the the 302 would be all kinds of stuff from delaware with like me on it <laughs> But, uh, so what's going on? What's the topics for tonight? Other than Dustin, hardware? Dustin oh, looked like he used, care. he'd use, why do I look like, I, I look like I would use Kurt's card care. <laughs> what does that mean? Oh, no, I didn't, turn, about you. I didn't turn tops down. I haven't had any sort of, well, I don't know what you mean, Zig, as far as like sponsorship or tops card. I didn't turn them down for either one. Hasn't gotten any any traction yet, yet, yet. So, so I'm going to be honest. Some of the names they're picking. A few more years, we might have a chance, Dustin. After they, yeah, they just run out of people. Yeah, longevity. We'll eventually get there. Series twelve. I haven't even looked at the Wemby one of one that everybody's referencing. I've just heard the stories about you know the Kurtz card care getting shouted out, but I haven't seen the card itself, so I'm not even sure if it was legitimately should have should have legitimately been a 10 or if there was defects on it such as centering because i see if splenda down here has a comment saying that it was off centered so it's i haven't seen actually the card. it's not actually off centered it was sitting but, in the case crooked um, but how'd they how they uncrooked it like all of a sudden it looks better how does that work oh psa cards you could give them a little wiggle on a case so you're saying they wiggled that thing? Would you wiggle that damn card in the case? I guess it doesn't matter now. It's in the 10 case. 
you could you could bash it against the wall and just kind of like move it around i suppose put it in a slab mag and then just move it around in there mm -hmm. what exactly did the guy say also did he because you know i've been he just said shout out the kurtz card fair and that was it right <laughs> shout out to kurtz yeah. shout out to kurtz card care Maybe it was just a marketing ploy for Kurt's card care. Maybe he never touched it. We don't know. That's what I mean. Yeah. I mean. Here, you want to share my screen, Dustin? It's yeah. a lot easier. It's it, it's super easy to assume that because he would say something like that because Kurt's card care touched it. But, yeah. So this was the original image that everyone freaked out about. That's off center. That's off center. It, it is. It is off center. Would you no, say no, it's hold 60 on, Hold on. Hold on, Steve. Before, you, before you, you start screaming. This is bull. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> so is that really that off-centered? I mean, it is slightly, but it ain't like. No, but it doesn't even look like the same card. <laughs> they got seven of these one-on-ones. They're just putting different ones up. Okay, how did they, how does that work? They just tapped it against. You can the see card. right here on the right-hand side. In the first image, the card shifted to the right. Okay, so you, in the first image, you can't really tell where the card stops in the background. Correct, begins. because it's all, and they use the back black round when they yes. scan it. So okay, so the, it it's just the sense. black on the black. You can't really see it. Yeah, so everyone everyone was looking at where the pillars were on the PSA holder and thinking right. that it was, like, way off-centered, when in reality, that's not what the card actually looks yeah, like. Yeah, that, that's... If people that's were like, Some people in the comments were like, did anyone actually look at the rock card? The rock card, you can tell it's not 60 40 centering. It's like pretty decent. It's not bad. 75 25. Yeah, I mean, that picture there is legit. I mean, that picture there is good centering. The first picture, no, was not so good. Right. Yeah. Oh, oh I, I mean, for sure. If you just took a quick glance at this, you'd be like, what? Yeah. But I've seen PSA 10. I mean, I've seen PSA give 10s to that type of centering before, though, anyway. Jeez, D sub coming in hot baby neo yeah we i don't know why we don't have any brendan doesn't have any adult picture oh yeah i guess he does because we use it for our normal one yeah for our uh, for our uh dumb it was dumb. artist artist choice to make me look like a five-year-old <laughs> yeah he just took you down a notch there steve looks like don drysdale and yogi Berra had a kid love you steve-o yeah big c7 card says all we have to do is is live long enough for tops to run out of content creators and then we'll finally get our own cards from tops Ray, I'm wearing one of those Dune suits. I don't know if you've seen the Dune movies, but where you kind of like, you know, move in and out, like, like try to stab you and I've got the suit on to where I can kind of like move in and out. That's why it's wavy like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you notice how we upgraded with some tunes. We got a little backdrop. Still can't afford a mic uh, or, or anything else, but it's getting better. So better with I mean, actually better with music or without music i can cut the music let me know in the chat i can cut the music that, it's not that loud yeah i'm keeping it pretty low so i don't think it's overbearing but i kind of like the, the vibe steve how what's are up? you feeling what's your question steve no put me to sleep. <laughs> i was just going to say i mean regardless if we think using kurt's card care is right or wrong or immoral or whatever i mean the psa states that if they can detect something then it's not allowed now if someone says or even admits, and so this person didn't clearly come out and admit it. They shouted out Curse Card Care, but just say that this was an admission. A lot of people are looking at this, and a lot of people are taking this as this was an admission that this card was used, or this card was, you know, Curse Card Care was used on this card. That's the way it's being viewed. So that's the way we'll we'll, we'll take it. Um, All right. Just because, some, so say that's an admission. Even though PSA looks at that and says, okay, they say that this happened, but we still can't prove that it happened. So we still have to grant it the grade that we think it should get. Or do we just say, okay, they admitted it, so we're going to punish them for admitting it. Well, they're clearly not doing that because they don't. Right, they're not. That. They're not. But, uh, but what I'm saying <laughs> is, but what I'm saying, do they have to detect something regardless of rumors, regardless of facts? Regardless, because it could be a fact, regardless of what somebody says, even if someone self-incriminates themselves, does PSA themselves still have to find that person guilty by evidence? I mean, yeah, based off according to what they said today, they have to right. see it. But you have to be looking for it to see it. That's, I mean, that's really the ultimate. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I said today, the, the, 
the great it's in the best interest of the grading companies to allow well, this if i go to the doctor grade. if i go to the doctor and say, hey doctor i'm pregnant he's gonna say no you're not pregnant i'm gonna say yes i'm pregnant he's gonna say no you're overweight i'm gonna be like no 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 i'm pregnant you, know, you, then, that, you can actually I'll be like, I want all the tests I'm, i want all the tests all right you negative can actually pregnancy, test for that though ne negative pregnancy test negative blood test um you know nothing in the sonogram they can't detect anything let's let's use that term they can't detect any signs of an embryo or pregnancy but i insist that i'm pregnant i'm not pregnant till the day i shoot a baby out right by the doctor's <laughs> by the doctor's assessment <laughs> so you know that's a wild uh, analogy that you just put us through there steve um you know, so my thing was and again, get your attention yeah quickly i think the main thing was is just we don't know the long term the, the long term uh, of that stuff we, we just yeah. don't know it's kind of going back to what we talked about with orlando's card <laughs> if the stuff comes back what happens if they clean a thousand, you know, ten thousand cards over the years, and then they come back, you know, down the road, and we're like, oh, those were like ten years down the road. Remember the cleaning days? Remember all the cleaning? And then what do we give like some? Um, and then what it'll be is probably premiums on those cards that you know that don't have the cleaning stuff on it or whatever. You know, I'm not saying that that'll happen, but here's people have been doing this way before Kurt's card care existed. I, They've been cleaning Chrome think. cards in the nineties. <laughs> it's nothing new. But that's what I'm saying. But but that like Orlando's card is a vintage card, like years later, like to your yeah. point, it came yeah, back. But he's got a card. That's, that's the thing, though. He's that's got a graded thing, card that's not accurate. But that's the that's the thing, though. I think that when you're comparing vintage restoration and and modern and using something on the surface of a chromium card, it's kind of like apples and oranges. I know that it's probably. I mean, when you're making up laws, there can't be gray area. Yeah, but you don't. There can't be gray area. But you don't know if the results will be apples and oranges. We don't know that yet. Like you're you're saying that, but like we don't know. We're just kind of we're you're assuming that it wouldn't change it, right? Okay, so let's use Orlando's example. Is there more, or is his an outlier? An outlier is could is be, could I be mean, an how many cards? I mean, if we if we think many 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 cards, old vintage cards have been restored to some extent, or something something has been used on the surface, or something has been yeah. done. You know, cards have been proved to be trimmed because you can size a card and you can figure things like that out. I but, had a I had a guy comment today that he had a gum stain where it was a similar type story. So I'm not saying that like there's thousands of these. There there might not be, but mm -hmm. I don't think Orlando is the only one. It was a gum stain for now. This PSA states that there's something on the surface that shouldn't be there, then they're going to disqualify a card. So should a gum stain be on a card? Does that fall under that? Or is that gray area as well? Well, does because it? they grade cards with gum stains. They just give them a stain. You can right. ask for a stain qualifier or you can just take the hit for the gum stain on it. Right. So right. that's a big hit. But they don't disqualify it. They don't say this is altered. Oh, well, yeah, maybe they, well, mm -hmm. Yeah, they they qualify it. Well, yeah, but that's I mean, yeah. You, you want a exactly. qualifier? You want a qualifier on your PSA nine, ultra modern card, ST? Yeah, I mean, no. <laughs> no, you don't want a qualifier on anything, really. It a qualifier automatically knocks two grades off of your grade by 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 the way the market works. I if you think have a seven with a qualifier, you're better. Many people would rather have a five, a straight five, than a seven with a qualifier. Right. Right. But when we're talking about PSA punishing people for stuff on their cards, we're talking about them disqualifying the card from grading altogether. They're not saying, hey, this has been sprayed with a cleaner, so we're going to grade it two points less. What they're saying is, we're not going to grade it at all. This is considered altered. We're not putting a grade on it. Yeah, or they'll give it an altered grade or whatever. But I think Neo, you had a good point. It's like, when was the last time you saw and again, maybe I don't I don't look at these cards and I don't watch every single PSA reveal or, or whatever reveal, but when's the last time you saw an ultra modern card that got an altered, you know, like because of surface wax or what you know, like I'm not even giving out my opinions here. I'm just trying to play devil's advocate, you know. No, I'm I'm all for it. I think it's a great card. I'm, I'm just trying to it's just asking story. questions. Right. Just, we're just asking questions. We're just asking questions. Wasn't this yeah. accurate though, Hobby Champs? I'm I'm like Hemsworth and Rob's kind of, you know, Rob's Rob. Right. 
and I'm gone. Dustin's big enough. It's, Jesus. And Excuse Steve, me having an attack Steve. video to go make for tomorrow now. <laughs> yeah. I could use the exposure, so please. Let me, so, let me go get let me go um, get my yeah. dashboard cam and go drive around and yell at the camera. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, to, well, to Ziggy, that would be good content. The, the, Ziggy, that would be good content if you're asking legitimately about the kits. You should get a Kurtz Card Care and a Mr. Minty kit, and you should do a video uh, saying which one is the best value and which one works the best. Or is so we're just talking about back. knowing if yeah. cards have been disclosing if cards have been clean yet. In all honesty, based off the comment sections today, you should pretty much just assume that every ultra modern card has been cleaned in some way, shape, or form. So, am I missing it? And maybe I am. Is Kurt's card care really the one only falling under fire right now? He's just the most well known one. So, but it, it's, it's probably the biggest Kurt's card care is, is being used like Kleenex here, right? Or is it because he does a lot more to the cards? I mean, at least he's open about it. I mean, he posts it all on Instagram, his card, and he does he's, a lot more to him. This is just the most well-known, so Kurt's Card Care has become well, the Kleenex of card cleaning kit. I don't think Mr. Minty, the individual, the guy, and I'm not talking about his his packet is called Mr. Minty. He's called Mr. Minty. Is That's not his real name. But him himself, um, I don't know if he does card restoration to the extreme of what we've seen. Well, Kurt and I, card th care I, think, do. I think Kurt, and I could be wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure his IG says something to, like card restoration, actually says mm -hmm. restoration in it. So obviously that's different. Like that, that's going to, that's going to look a little bit different. If someone's saying it's actual restoration, that's not cleaning. That's, that could be other stuff as well. Again, I've never used a surface, the, the service. So I don't, I don't know. Like I'm not, I've never, I've never been down the rabbit hole. So, so I have a question here then, because Steve Spund has got another content. He says in a perfect world, it should be disclosed. In essence, the fact that that person shouted out Kurt's card care was it passively, was, a dis was passively a disclosure. If, if he wasn't just shouting out Kurt's card care, which everybody assumed he wasn't doing, um, everybody was assuming that the card, you know, was treated with some sort of shine and stuff like that. Um, but now on the secondary market do you believe that that devalues the card or do you think that anybody that was going to buy that is going to pay the same for it anyway that yeah, won't affect the price at all i mean it's been disclosed so anybody who is a right. buyer for that Wemby one of one which is none of us and nobody in the comments and pretty much nobody doing a video on it um is it going to hurt the value or is the is the buyer going to be like i don't care i want to pay i'm going to pay for it regardless i mean well, it will affect, it will affect, it will affect i think it overall. and i think the reason why is because it's already in the case you know that's the thing that that you know okay so if they fixed a divot and in five years there's a little dent on it that mm -hmm. popped up what's somebody going to say are they going to remember back maybe for that card because it's high profile but for most right. cards no one's going to think back. They're just going to say, oh, well, they got a favorable grade. You know, like, oh, they might have missed that thing or whatever. And they got a, they got a favorable grade or something. Mm -hmm. And I don't think people care. It's, they're going to say, hey, it's sitting in a 10 holder. Right. And then like Splenda yeah. says, he thinks it almost makes grading pointless, which that that could make a little bit of sense where. Um, but still, not all cards are going to be able to be fixed or restored or clean to the point to where they grade tens now maybe some more are i don't know now i I, just, I, if I, I don't think there's i just don't think there's some magic substance that you can put on a card and all of a sudden it's perfect if i understand too and, and maybe it's not kurtz but for some of these they they do work out edges and they do work out things so what we're talking about here cleaning is not altering unless you somehow change the factory surface factory surface finish of the card so technically you are if you're kind of working out edges and divots or whatever which i think that's part of the part of the deal i think that that or that's what some of them do i can't speak to which ones or whatever so i don't know if some people might look at that differently some people might not but again i think it boils down to people are just trying to get tens <laughs> however they can get tens because tens draw such a huge premium in today's market and that's the bottom line Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a skill, right? 
this is like a skill. This is like an art. This is sort of something that somebody's got to be trained to do. Whether you're in like fine art restoration, you know, you work in museums, things like that. This is not just something that, at least for myself, think I could go out and buy a kit and roll corners out of things and use some kind of substance to get wrinkles out and make the color pop and clean the dirt off of the back. Like I've put water on a chromium base card and wiped it off with a microfiber mm -hmm. before. That's like the extent of my skill level when it comes to manipulating a card. So rather you have these tools because these tools, rather Kurt's card care or rather Mr. Minty or anybody are selling these cards in a kit or in a pack. These are basic substances that you could probably go anywhere and buy. You could probably go to an auto detailing shop and buy all this type of stuff. It's basically the know-how and the skill within the individual on whether they're able to success successfully do it or not. Like buffing out your car, detailing your car or something, right? Yeah, but I mean, I don't think it's as easy as everybody makes it sound. Oh, I'm just going to go out. I'm going to get a spray. I'm going to wipe it off. And my card is perfect. If, if that was the case, we would have been doing this forever. We'd have been doing this for the last 20 years. Yeah. It's a tough one. It's a tough Your one. Achiever says it's actually kind of easy, but it's easy to say that it's easy man you have been on a roll today steve no i'm just being honest like i, I i'm tired of people just and bullshit man oh whoa steve's coming in hot <laughs> all right rob how are the calves no, cracking slabs is not hard cracking slabs Cavs are up 11. Cavs are up yeah. 11 we got 146 to go in the third floor oh okay I'm playing zion tonight Hey, the Pelicans have been looking pretty good. Yeah, Pelicans have been on fire. Look out. We got Mitchell back tonight. We're, we're oh, good. Okay. Yeah, Ryan makes a good point down here because this is something that I said, I think, when I was on with Michael Hamm and Ziggy last week. I was like, it takes a lot of balls to even be able to take a card and dump it in a bowl of liquid. Like, I wouldn't know what to do with it after that. Especially a one-of-one -one Victor Weminyama card. You know, like, hell, well, no. you don't know that that was dipped in water. He's yeah, talking about like, the, the, the blow dryer. What are you getting out the blow dryer? And... I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even want to touch that card, let alone like put it, you know, blow dry it or whatever, you know, whatever you're going to do with it. I wouldn't want to do anything to it. You I mean, I've watched book, videos sit on of, it. <laughs> uh, comic book cleaner impressors like working on like AF 15, and it's just, I there's no way. I, I don't have the nerves to deal with this shit. Be like a baseball glove, right? Just stick a baseball in it and throw it in the oven. The Delaware, <laughs> the Delaware I had I have on is from a, a store called Sierra Moon. They have two stores in Rehoboth Beach. They sell clothing. Why do I have a feeling that's going to be a trivia question for the giveaway? It's not, but I think you may have been there with me. Which we store was it? it? When you were here. It was a Sierra Moon. It's right near the boardwalk. Like three spots off the boardwalk. What, uh, have you started building the questionnaire list yet? <laughs> no, I haven't. But hey, I put, I put buffalo sauce and, and ranch on a, on a, on an optic card before. And nobody calls any kind of uproar like this. And it made that card perfect smelled better it tasted better it looked better mike petty soaks himself in hydrogen peroxide <laughs> himself and no wonder no wonder no wonder you're coming in hot so much you have blonde hair <laughs> weird stuff probably burning himself with candle wax that's too. what happened to my hair i put it hydrogen peroxide on it one time because i wanted to be bleach blonde and it all fell out did they make kurt's card care for your head <laughs> Mike Petty sitting yeah. in a circle with candles all, all around him right now with his hydrogen peroxide. It might make my head really, really shiny. But I use turtle wax, so, you know, I don't need Kurt's card care. The little teeny bit of wax, I guess, that comes in one of those kits is not enough. I need a full uh, vat of... Uh, like a Ninja Turtle? Yeah. You're like Casey Jones mixed with a Ninja Turtle. <laughs> Daisy could have game used collar cards. How about that? Oh, she's getting too big for her harness too, because she's getting all festively plump. So it's like, I mean, <laughs> we just cut up. 
I don't know where she's at. She's not even up here. I took her to the beach today, man. She was tired. She fell asleep in the car on the way home. It's not even that far home. She was out. So, yeah, a couple videos from now. There'll be another day at the beach with the dog. So, anyway, I need, I'm need. i going to need that slab mag there, Dustin, because, okay, when you were, I don't know if you remember, when you were down, do you remember... Okay, down at the beach, at least on the Delaware coastline, there's these big concrete towers that were built for World War II as a um, coastline defense, basically. And they're really, really tall concrete towers. Where there's one of them, you can go to the top of it. Like, it's there's no uh, there's nobody or guards or anything at the bottom or anything. It's just a concrete tower with stairs on the inside. You can go all the way to the top. And today I went all the way to the top of it. It's pretty high. So I think I'm going to take a slab from each company up there and I'm going to throw it over the side into the parking lot and I'm going to see which slabs crack and which ones don't but I also want to test a slab <laughs> mag I also want to test a slab mag to see if it works or a slab strong I don't know what that one is I don't even know what that is is that a case or just a cover anyway I want to test them all and yeah, see it's like a rubber bumper and see whose item actually works I like that I like it. Um, Steve, is the old collect -a card company still around? They would be perfect for the Daisy cards. I, I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with the collect -a card, but I can look that up. Tops big league before getting into the YouTube sport. Probably, yeah. Probably right, Bob. And that's okay. What other big news do we have in the hobby currently? So there's the... Well, man, we have NFL free agency. We haven't even gotten oh into any sports Oh, my God. Yet. Holy smokes. Yeah, the Saints uh, signed Willie Gay from the Chiefs, one of their linebackers. We don't have any money, so we're just going <laughs> to fight. That's, That's how my Miami's broke. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're broke. But Miami's still okay with it. Miami's signing players, but, man, I don't know what to think. It doesn't matter because I'm a Chiefs fan and we locked up Chris Jones for a while and you know, so we're good to go. <laughs> yeah. But it was, uh, just great. but for my brother and my dad's sake, you know, I still will talk about the Dolphins a little bit. <laughs> and then Neo picked up Jameis Winston from my Saints, and that's oh, gonna boy. be the guy that puts puts the Browns over the edge. Oh, that's gonna be boy. the guy that that's the locker room voice, just the knowledge that you guys need. To get over the hump. As okay. you know, I bought three Saquon Barkley cards, a red optic contenders out of 199. I bought a cracked ice contenders out of 24. Those are both at PSA. But I also bought a playoff ticket rookie contenders and a BGS 95. And that one was numbered out of 25. And I bought it, it might have been late January, early February for 200 bucks. And when I got to work on Monday, I hadn't been keeping up with the NFL free agency. And I got to work on Monday, and I, of course, I live not far from Philly. So the Eagles fans are like, oh, Super Bowl. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And they're like, um, we got Saquon Barkley. And I like, I already had pictures saved on my phone. So I was like, boom, eBay, like instantly. I was standing on the casino floor and everything. I was like, oh, this has got to go on eBay right now. I was like, I can't run it at a... It's Monday, so I can't do a five-day auction until tomorrow. And it would have been a seven-day auction if I started on Sunday. So I said, I'm going to throw it up right now for $350. Buy it now. And if nobody buys it, I'll start the auction tomorrow on Tuesday night and run it for five days. That thing didn't even sit on eBay for 20 minutes. And I flipped that $200 card for $350. Now, net less than $350. That's what it sold for. But I was like, damn, I'm not pinned under, you know, I was hoping to just get like three or four nice Saquons because I was hoping something like this would happen. But if something like this didn't happen, I was going to kind of be pinned with them. So it happened and I've already flipped one. That cracked ice, if it grades out good at PSA, or at PSA is going to be, um, it's going to be a good flip. I probably should use some Kirk Cards Care. I should have used some. Juice yeah, I should have used some before I sent it in. But, you know, I was, I don't know if there's chemicals that melt the ice on there or not. I love when the younger people use these this verbiage so I can understand like what how people talk. Well, of course, like it's the most boomer thing ever to even like to even like try to talk about this. And what then happened? and then mouth breathers. Complete mouth breathers. Love it. Mouth breathers. You mouth breathers. Did somebody call you that? Well, I guess what he's saying is uh, it's only going to weed out the complete mouth breathers. 
Uh, the only way that they, they can detect you is if you're a goof and leave wax right Hey, man, when I went to the top of that tower today, I was breathing out of my mouth. I was like, <laughs> uh, baby D, I need to gear 2,000 bootleg snacks. Nobody knows that reference because nobody, <laughs> anybody <laughs> old boomer. enough. <laughs> you're, bo you're a boomer, Steve, apparently. Baby D, baby D in the year 2,000 bootleg snacks. So that had to be over 24 years ago. So, but anybody know that movie reference? Uh, no, not ringing a bell. Somebody in the comments has to. Bush Leaguer does. Justin, I use Kurtz. <laughs> but he's right. Bush Leaguer Bush is right. It's next Friday. Oh, <laughs> damn. A lot of people got it. I'm still it's going baby. over the pregnancy. I'm still going over the pregnancy chat. I'm a little, I'm about 20 yeah. minutes behind. No, sh you're way behind. <laughs> I'm just trying to get to everybody. <laughs> All right. How's that IG Let's chat going? I'll skip ahead. I don't know. I can't find it on. Like, <laughs> she knows about the new the, the new Twinkies. Host just got a new cupcake coming out. It's a bad motherfucker. <laughs> These guys, I can't believe you guys don't know it. <laughs> Come on, relate with the people in your comments, man. So what's next, Steve? Now that now football flips are done, like, what are you? Are you just taking time off? Oh no, 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 no. I mean, I'm buying. Like I'm buying, look, so like I said, I just dropped 45 cards off at the Philly show for submission. Now I talked in my, uh, very briefly, I, I was in and out of that show quick, but SGC had their own booth there. PSA had a booth there completely set up way in the back. Uh, BGS was also set up there, but SGC and PSA, either they haven't started working together yet, or they, I mean, they were completely apart and there wasn't even any notation that they were even under the same umbrella now. So you're saying that they're doing exactly what they said they're going to do and remain separate companies. Wow. Oh, you, talk about, you talk about in the video or something. I don't listen to your videos. <laughs> well, Neo said that they're just going to swallow them up. They're like, it's going to be like that. Star mm, like, Wars. Baby D. <laughs> like Boba Fett gets swallowed up by that creature. Like SGC is going to get swallowed up like Boba Fett. I mean, I'm just saying, SGC Pete came out with a with a video, and there's the, the big thing they were giving them was some better fraud detection. I didn't hear anything about a new slab. But anyway, I already roll. have, but I already have 16 raw yeah, cards here. Fix that waterproof waterproof uh, slab that they got right now. Maybe they can make some upgrades there. Nothing about that. Yeah, I got 10 more cards. I'm waiting on about 16 here, and I got a bunch of offers in, so I'm still buying. But yes, Neo, I have pivoted. I have pivoted. I'm not necessarily going after young quarterbacks anymore or not anybody that I thought was going to not anyone that I thought was going to be affected by free agency or the draft. I'm finished with both of those. Um, my video that comes out not tomorrow, but the next day actually talks about that and talks about why, uh, why I'm uh, now I'm not talking about what I'm buying next, but I am talking about why I'm pivoting out of those players and my thoughts on people who want to continue to try to buy those players. Um, now there are some quarterbacks that I'm still buying just because People at the national are going to want them, even if they're not, even if they don't really have any hype around them. There's just going to, there's going to be people that are going to think that Bryce Young is going to bounce back, or there's going to be people that aren't willing to. Uh, let me put that differently: aren't willing to give up on him yet. What being the first pick of the draft, what being an Alabama quarterback. I mean, Tua and Jalen Hurts weren't very good either. Their first and second years, but they were Alabama quarterbacks. They developed into NFL quarterbacks. So there's going to be people that have that mindset and his stuff is so cheap that people, there are going to be some people that want that. There are going to be some people that like Will Levis. They're just, there's just going to be some buzz. So I want to have some of that stuff. That doesn't mean I think these players are going to develop or be good. Tennessee did just sign Calvin Ridley to a big contract. I don't know how much of a difference that makes uh, for Will Levis, but, um, and they brought in Tony Pollard, who they'll probably use. They got a whole new coaching staff there. I really don't know. And in Carolina. So that'll be a lot of the things that people are thinking. But as far as this, the players that I already had, the only way I'll buy the players that I was already selling is if I get them really, really, really cheap. It has to make a lot of sense. Um, so like the Kyler Murray stuff that's done. Um, right now, it's looking like I'm going to get plunged on uh, Justin Fields unless something happens with him. The Sam Darnolds, I made money, but if I'd have held him for one more week, I'd have probably even done a little better, but that's okay. That's fine. I think you still have a chance on Fields because if anything's going to happen there, it's going to be at the draft. Yeah. There, there, there's still going to be buzz around Fields, and the fact that he's, an, he's a Buckeye, I'll be able to move that stuff at the National. They're, they're just oh. – that, 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 that was the fail safe. At least I'll be in Cleveland in Buckeye country. 
with the Justin Fields cards of all else. I wouldn't else. mind picking up some. I'm looking at some Stroud stuff for the National. Oh, I've been picking up some Stroud stuff. Now his stuff's expensive, but I I'm buying completely raw cards right now. Like I'm not going. I'm not buying slabs. CJ Stroud slabs are going to be too hard to flip. But if you can get his stuff raw and get good grades, hench the catch line there, get good grades. Then well, he's uh, gonna he's gonna wax them up. But I have some, but I like the cheaper end Stroud stuff. I like some of the lower end inserts that are numbered and things like that. Yeah, I think this is the problem right here. If you look at kind of the teams that are left, you know, in the draft, they're probably all going to pick QBs. You know, the Falcons, uh -huh. the Falcons got Cousins, so they're off the board for a QB. But first three picks probably going to be QBs, it looks like. And then that fourth pick, why a lot of people are buying Kyler Murray is going to be Harrison, most likely. You know, so who is going to give Fields a start? Do you think Chicago just keeps him? Just keeps him as a backup for a year? Or just cuts him? I, you know, I don't they know. Could, I don't they know. They could keep him if something happens in camp to somebody. Like, if, if someone got hurt, he would be, like, the number one guy. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, hold on to him. Well, you guys know what happened with the Kyler Murray card that I got in the mail today. So that's a $165 setback right there. I'm eating that loss like Baby D eating host cupcakes. But yeah. um, so I was $300 up off the initial cards that I that I bought. And then I sold an immaculate that I bought for 200 bucks. I sold for 350, which gave me another 150. And then I sold a Panini one that I bought for 125 for 280. So that really put me, and I was already up 300 bucks. That really put me up on Kyler Murray stuff because I'm still holding the downtown. So I, I'm essentially at this point, I'm into the downtown for free. And I was already up, I guess, going up close to five to $600 on the Kyler Murray. However, I took a big $170, $175 loss on a LeBron card, which knocked me down. And then that $165 loss I took on a Kyler Murray card that you guys saw about today, I threw that card in the, in the trash can. You, people in the comments are going to know what the hell I'm talking about, but um, it'll be in that a video. video. I mean, I'll that fill them video. in. I mean, for being for, for being loyal and being at the live stream, I mean, I'll fill them in. They deserve it. Anyway, I got a card from, I got a card in a slab today, and the grade on the slab, <laughs> I'm, trying to be, I'm trying to talk around it, Dustin. Um, <laughs> but, the, but the grade on the slab was a was a was what I would call a solid grade. It was a good grade. But when I snapped that card out and put it under a magnifier, I didn't even really need to put it under a magnifier. It looked like Baby D had taken a bite out of the back edge and corner of it. Like the back edge and the corner was completely gashed. It looked like, like I said, it looked like Edward Scissorhands. It looked like Stevie Wonder graded it and, Steve, or, and Edward Scissorhands encapsulated it. That's what it looked like. So I bought that on the trust that that slab <laughs> was a safety net for how the card was actually going to look. And when I busted it out, it was completely, and I did not mangle it busting it out. I'm a professional slab cracker at this point. In fact, I busted out on video. So anybody, you know, SGC, God damn it. It wasn't, in a, it wasn't them. It was anyway. <laughs> It was Jim anyway, Bob's, I threw Jim the, anyway, I threw the card in the trash because I wasn't even going to keep it around and attempt to sell it raw because selling a damaged raw card is is out of my morale. It's it's not in my morale, right? It's unethical. So I just threw it in the trash. And this was a this was a mythic black Pandora out of twenty five Kyler Murray rookie card, uh, uh, optic mythic insert mythical insert black pandora it was a nice card it was such a shame because the card looked really really good i mean it was a beautiful card regardless of who the player on it was the design and everything and it just uh went in the trash you could have sold that damage and just noted what was wrong with it i could have but i'm not going to deal with that headache you start know? a mag and throw it up on auction or something i i could i mean i could even be I could even be dirty. I could, I could even be dirty and consign it, and Kurt, let the consign Kurt, let the consignment house deal with it. But, um, but I threw it away. Yeah, it's well, not even. Could have put that in the humidor. Put it in the soak. We'll soak. Put it in a bath the tank for like a day or two. 
And yeah, you throw that in the wood chipper, and it just kind of they can straighten it yeah, out. Yeah, I could have sent it to Kurt's card care and saw if he could have got it out, but no. And like Spurs card says, I threw it away for views, but it's not even going to be like on the thumbnail or in the title. That yeah, I honestly, out. you should have just given it like a kit or something. I shouldn't have to throw a card away for views. You should be viewing my content for other reasons. Steve, are you looking at any non-sport stuff? Well, did you see my Philly video? Vintage card you. collector. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I saw you, you bought and sold those those two Walking Dead. Yeah, you guys, I, I Instagram you or texted you and Ham, right? Yeah. As I think he's on IG because I remember, I remember seeing it before the video. Because that was so quick. Like, I walked up to that table. He had those two. I buy off this dealer a lot because he has a lot of pop culture stuff. He's the same dealer I bought all the Game of Thrones stuff uh, at the National in Atlantic City. So he knows me. We deal a lot. And that's the good thing about building relationships and doing deals with people. But he had them $220 a piece. And I'm like, so I'm like, man, I'm like, you do, what did I say? I said, you do 360 on those for the pair. I said, I'll buy the pair for 360 And he's like, man, I'd really like to be at 400 That's $200 a card. So then I'm like, well, uh, I can do 380 But then I phrased it to him. I can do 380 and that's 190 per card. So when it's set, when he's wanting 200 per card and 100, and I say 190 per card, that sounds like we're really good and close. So I picked you, them both you did up. A, you did a Jedi mind trick on him. Well, no, just, you know, you, you, just just right verbiage. you just want to use the right verbiage to make your deal sound good. So when I say, hey, I, when he's asking for 400, it, it, when you say I'm asking for 400 for the pair and I say I'm asking for 380 for the pair, it sounds like we're $20 off. But when I say, hey, I'll give you 380, that's 190 per card. And he is asking 200 per card. In his mind, it sounds like we're $10 off. These are not the droids you're looking for. Right? So we made the deal. And um, so I was into them for 380. And I reached out to somebody that I knew would have interest in them because I know that they like those cards. And it was a quick $600 sale for the two of them. So it was, and it was all cash. It was Venmo. And, um, other than my shipping cost, you know, I flipped those 380 for $600 in less than an hour. I mean, I made that deal in the car on the way home. Are and you, that was on uh, pop culture stuff. Are you going to try to get to another show before the national? <laughs> I would like to. I might try to pull the grind for Ch Chantilly the way I, I did for the Philadelphia show. Because they're about the same distance for me. So I can, because I work late, if I want to get off work at five in the morning, like I did for the Philadelphia show and come home and be out of my house by seven in the morning, I can be in Philly by nine, or I can be in, I can do the same thing, be in Chantilly by nine and be at the show until like one and then head back home. That's what I did in Philadelphia. So I got to the show around probably more closer to 1030, probably got my bearings and got in there and got comfortable more 11 ish and i was also trying to shoot some content that was slowing me down a little bit but i was super duper focused on what i what my plan was usually if i have unlimited time at a show i don't go in with a plan i know i'm gonna be there for a couple days or all day i'm gonna look at all the showcases i'm gonna check everything out but in the philly show like i said in my video i was looking for quality raw cards that was that was it so with the majority of your dealers at shows having slabs I was able to skip a lot of tables and Philadelphia is also vintage heavy. I knew I wasn't looking for anything for the vintage PC. Um, so, and it was, a, so it's been a year to the date of the <clears throat> Willie Mays rookie purse. Oh, that's right. Yeah. We were dancing yeah. around that thing for a couple hours. Yeah. And we were all there that for that one last year in March. And we, then we yeah. danced around those big ass cheese steaks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't do much dancing with it, but, um, but yeah, I had it in. I looked for as many cases that had nice raw cards in them or raw cards in general. Then I got to look at them to see if they're nice. All of my deals were fairly smooth. I I offered fair. Everybody that I had experience with were, was priced pretty fair. So the negotiations weren't tough. And then I ran into the Walking Dead cards because that guy's always in Philly. Now, I didn't seek his table out, but I, I saw his table. So I was like, man, I have to stop at his table. He always has um pop culture stuff and he did he had a lot he told me he had just picked up a big collection and that he had also sold an andrew lincoln like either the day before friday or before i stopped there at the table 
and but there was two left i'd have bought all three but um but yeah i would still like to get the chantilly uh, uh, assuming health because i've been sick every day for the last four weeks <laughs> for uh, all of 2024 yeah basically if I'm feeling good, my plan is still to make it down the chance. I'm, I'm kind of holding out for Heroes and New York. Heroes, uh, I'm 100% in for already. I mean, we haven't booked yeah. anything, but we're in and we're in for... We haven't booked anything, but I'm basically in for New York Comic Con. So are you guys doing Chantilly? Or is that out I'm, I'm I know you were interested in yes. first. I mean, if I go, it's more than likely going to be on a Saturday. If I go, and, I'll, um, I'll go to, I'll leave Friday morning and be there Friday night, Saturday, and come home Sunday. Phoenix Rising, it's uh, 2012, um, season two, card A1. It's the first Andrew Lincoln autograph where he's wearing his sheriff hat. Mm. So it is a very popular card amongst Walking Dead collectors because it's his only card where he's wearing his sheriff hat that he autographed. That's another tidbit that I just gave out. <laughs> deep where do you get this free information from? Yeah, Steve goes deep on the Walking Dead. Well, just any of those kind of sets. You make yeah, sure. I'm not. I've never even watched The Walking Dead. I just know that it's popular. Friends at work talk about it. If people at work are talking about something, then it must have some. The casino of- drives all the buys. Oh, uh, spoilers for an upcoming video. I got a Hayden Christensen auto today, Steve. Oh, did you? Yeah, I think it's the same one you got. The Stellar with him and like holding the saber across his chest. Yeah, maybe. It might the 2017 stellar what is it numbered out of 40. uh yeah it's the base yeah. i think it's the 2017. it's, it's yeah, the one 20- of him not as vader right it's one of him as anakin the 2017 is the first year of stellar what so i wanted i wanted year. him as anakin not as vader yeah i want him as anakin too everybody yeah, loves one of the anakin. last um more major characters that i needed one mm-hmm. finally popped up for a decent price on a facebook group and i grabbed it Yeah. Well, Phoenix Rising, I sold a Negan autograph in Atlanta for 500. Well, I had the three Walking Dead autographs I had in Atlanta. One was I had two priced at 500 and one priced at, or all three actually, I'm sorry, all three priced at 500, but those were graded. I had sent them to SGC. All three of them got nine five uh, Gem Mint Pluses with auto tens. So, they got a little bit more of a premium than the ones that I just sold. I had them priced at 500 a piece. I sold all three to the same buyer for 1400. So they got a hundred dollars off because they bought all three. Then the two that I just bought, I, my plan was to send them again to SGC, do the same thing, rinse and repeat, but they got bought so quickly. I was like 600 for the pair. I, of course, uh, it's a quick, 200 plus back into my pocket i get my i get my 380 dollars back plus an extra 200 plus in less than an hour that's just a no-brainer uh don't even deal with the grading companies and waiting and sending them off and then trying to find a buyer for them it's just instant sometimes you have a plan for a card but opportunity presents itself earlier like i didn't plan on selling my kyler merge yet but opportunity presented itself before i faster than i thought it could Dustin, now would be a good time to be buying Stranger Things stuff, right? With the season coming next year, I'm gonna load up. I've been I've, I've been loading up for a while. Yeah, I'm I'm locked and loaded for season five. It's just a matter of when they're gonna ever finish it. Like that's gonna be the thing. But there has been stuff. Occasionally, you see stuff pop up, like the rare stuff. But it's also pricey too at times. But occasionally, there will be there will be things that pop up for a good price, kind of like. You mentioned the Hayden Christensen auto. It's kind of the same sort of thing. You'll have like bins on eBay for $2,000 on a card. And then all of a sudden there's one running at auction and they're numbered out of 11 or whatever it is. Oh, it reminds me I'm in an yeah. auction right now. And so I'll grab the $2,000 card for, you know, or like the other ones at two, 2000, I'll get the other one for 200 bucks, you know, on auction. So that, that's what I've been doing. 23 minutes left. Oh, I thought I missed it. Uh oh. Let me go look on eBay at every sports card auction with 23 minutes left on it to see what I can leave <laughs> on. Michael Ham just text, texted me a card that he made, possibly for my trading cards that might be coming out. It's an image. Can't see it. Good. It's exclusive. Teaser. Did, is it in the group? 
Oh, it's just from Ham, Dustin. You're not in this group tag. Yeah, I didn't get it. It's a manga, like the Prism manga inserts. I'm not a fan of those. But it's like animated. It says manga. I actually kind of look like Superman here, but um, I have hair. It's different, but <laughs> it looks cool. Shipped, shipped, counter offer, seller offer. Steve, it's KD buying time. I think it's always KD buying time for Steve, though. I can't do it. Oh, you know what's hard? Is that I want to buy and grade some older Hall of Famers and veterans. But one of the best ones to buy and grade and sell is Dan Marino. I can't do it. Because if I do it, I'll be stuck with them. I won't sell them. Yeah. I'll go buy all these cool 90s refractors and golds and stuff of Dan Marino and I'll grade them out. And then I'll be like, no, the precious. And I won't be able to sell them. What's one PC card that y'all are looking to acquire and why? Rob, you go first. Or are you frozen? It's tough. Is he frozen? <laughs> he actually just went out like Tron. <laughs> <laughs> you're the weakest link goodbye <laughs> yes yeah, he got he just like he flew off the screen steve oh Ooh. man that's putting me on the spot right now because man yeah. i'm i'm not in like i've stated in some of my videos lately i stated this because i went to philly card show is i'm completely have zero mindset on a pc card right now that's not because i don't pc stuff because i love to add items to my pc but uh, this is the type of year where I'm really trying to build up my bankroll to buy a nice PC card. And building up my bankroll involves staying away from my PC stuff, or I'll buy it and I'll spend my bankroll on it. So right now I'm in full-on inventory grind, buy, grade, sell. Like I said, I'm going to have 45 cards coming back from PSA. I'm going to have about 30 more about to go out. I have a bunch coming in the mail. And... um I, I want a vintage card. I mean, that, that'll be where I lean to add a nice vintage rookie card. But there's so many that I like. So many that I like. I would love a Babe Ruth. I've said this before. I would love a Babe Ruth from his playing days. Not the 48 Leaf, but I would like you know, the Gowdy, the 33. One of the, Any one of the 33 Gowdies, basically in any grade, as long as it's not completely mangled. Um, I would eventually like to graduate into a 48 Leaf jackie robinson or the 48 49 leaf i don't know i'm not a vintage expert but from what i understand it's both years i have the 49 bowman so that's what i did the, i really wanted a jackie card really bad but i got the the 49 bowman in in atlanta that kind of that kind of put out my fire for a pc item for a while eat that jim brown yes i need a jim brown i need a jim brown rookie card that might be the one well, it's going to be not the national because we're in Cleveland, man. They'd be charging premiums. I know I got a guy, two of them. Yeah, I can't be doing it. I mean, the Jim Brown's not super rare. I need to try to find one of those probably on a vintage Discord or something where I can get a good deal on one where, where I don't have dealers charging me overhead and things like that or somebody that's looking to get out from under one because maybe they need some money or maybe they have multiples. I don't know, but... um. But the Jim Brown, yes, and it, and and the and the Hank Aaron, it would be nice to be able to say I have a Hank Aaron rookie, a Willie Mays rookie, and a Jackie card that some people consider to be a rookie card, not his best one, not his leaf, but to be able to say I have rookie cards of those three players, that just, I mean, I if I could walk up to somebody at work who knows nothing about the hobby and not even much about sports and say hey man i have a hank aaron a jackie robinson and a willie mays rookie cards and they would think that that was cool even though they don't even pay attention to the hobby yeah i'm kind of in the same boat where i'm kind of looking to add maybe some more of those kind of like foundational pieces kind of like th that maze rookie card that you have is great mm -hmm. Even like I was looking, I was looking the other day, I did the video on the blue Luca and it was like, what else can you get? And there was like kind of a mangled Mickey Mantle rookie that, yeah, the 51 Bowman that was right around five grand. And I was like, man, if I could get a one, you know, if I could get like a nice presenting one in that price range, I mean, to me, that's as much as I think that Mantle is just so kind of pumped 
you know, just so mega popular right now, I think having that card would be, it's, it's kind of like, if I'm going to buy a vintage baseball card, why not just go in like for the, for like the best one or, or top five card between like the 52 tops maze mantle and 51 Bowman maze mantle, you know, like to me, I would, it's like, why not just kind of spend a little bit more and get one of those. So I see. And so question for you, Dustin, because I did ask about PC and you did a video recently about this, basically decisions, 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 right? Um, yep. Are you leading away from the Luca Blue or and looking for maybe a Namath or a, or a, a vintage card? I mean, I know you brought up the Namath. I know you brought up the 51 Bowman Mantle, things like that. But so, I know how big you are on that Luca card, too. I mean, you have a picture of it in your background. You know? Yeah. And I think, too, just kind of like I think that's more emotional, kind of like a card that I never thought that I would own. But from and I, and I almost feel like I would probably rather have like the maze or mantle and then kind of like save up and get the, the Luca blue, almost kind of like to be like more more responsible, get kind mm -hmm. of like the one that's just kind of the. You know, th those are the best cards in the hobby, in my opinion, post-war anyway. You know, so I could kind of look at that as a foundational piece. And then down, you know, maybe in a year or two or whatever, I would like to add a big Luca card like that. Probably be that one. But I almost feel like I've got a little bit more time on him, you know, to where, like, I don't see him winning a title in the next couple of years. I don't see anything in the next couple of years that's going to give him a huge boost. And if that thing falls, if you, you, you saw one that fell kind of at 3,900. You know, if that thing just keeps up, if one creeps down into the low threes or something, you know, then maybe I can snag one. You know, that's because, I mean, you know, like three grand compared to five. I know it's not like, it's not that much money, but it kind of is when you're looking at, at these. So anyway, yeah, we'll see. But I get the same sort of emotional, like, man, like what a big get, like from that Luca as i would you know from a cool vintage card you know so ju just because like the maze and the mantle they're just all-time classic cards but they're available especially in those mm -hmm. lower grades I, i'm not looking at anything you know two and i'm, I'm literally looking for like a one one five yeah you know, so I mean, that's where I'm, that's where i am on my vintage stuff i mean yeah so there in that range it's not like i'm going to struggle to find one I mean, depending on the vintage stuff. I mean, if I was to get a Hank Aaron and of course, or a Jim Brown or something like that, I'd want a higher grade. But I mean, the Jackie Robinson and, you know, the Willie Mays, those were lower. Yeah. Let's see. The fun part is finding the one that fits what you're looking for. Yes. And getting it in that grade, like that entire afternoon I spent. For that That's Willie the Mays. best part of vintage buying. Absolutely. Because they are available, but your copy, the one that you want, the one that you're looking for with everything that you want, that's not yeah. it. There's like a specific copy for everybody. Yep. Because you know the cards are going to have issues. when you're, Anytime you're buying low grade, you know there's going to be something wrong with the cards. You just got to find the one, maybe two small things that appeal to you. And each every vintage card, I believe, is made for a different owner. Oh, okay. Neo, you answered him. I know Judson is a huge <laughs> Judson is the Jokic uh, mega collector, so he's a little bit biased. He's mm. a little biased, but hey, I respect it. I actually that, reach out to you if I go for any Jokic cards because I know the Joker knows. Blue Prism is nice looking. It's, it's a pretty such card. a great. I, 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 watch, nice. I watch Steve Splenda sell a Joker Blue Prism in front of my eyes. And it's such a gorgeous card. It is. Yeah, it's a great. I love those. That set. Is it sixteen or 15? Jokic. fifteen? Jokic, fifteen. Yeah. And it's far more rare. That's, uh, I mean, just as far as the print run and everything, than you know, eight. You know, what you need Dustin. You need one of these bad boys. I like that card. That's a great card. Yeah. You I know what I need to do is, yeah. My, my my channel's been getting a lot of new subscriptions. So I'm I'm picking up some new viewership. No, and no, so, Daisy. Daisy's picking up viewers. Yeah, you know, Daisy. She's, you know, I'm, I'm hoeing her out for the. Daisy doesn't have her own YouTube channel. But um, the year. you're just not. Doing hey, I've right. saved all the Daisy clips that I've shot for videos, and I'm just gonna put them all together in like a one minute short and see if it goes viral. But um, but uh, the thing is, I, I've had questions in my comments now, like, what do you collect? Do you have a personal collection? Now, uh, people have been, and this is not anybody's fault. It's just that my videos since the beginning of the year. Have been nothing but me buying and trading and flipping and yeah and, and things like grading and 
things like that and information. I haven't done a collection video in a while. Um, and I haven't talked about picking up PC items in a while, just like I couldn't hundred percent answer that question a minute ago. So a lot of people coming into my content now might think that I'm not the kind of person that collects, especially when you look at my name, my channel name, my channel name will forever keep me out of the YouTube hall of fame. And, um, <laughs> but, uh, I told them that I had the video of where I had the competition between myself and my cousin rock. Right. <laughs> so. I don't know if you remember that one. It was only like a three minute video, but I had five cards that I had myself. And then there was like five or so cards that Cousin Rock brought over to my house. And we were going back and forth on whose collection was better. So I was like, hey, if you go watch that video, then um, you can see a good variety of what I collect. You can see some of my vintage cards, some of my football cards, some of my music cards, you know, some of my pop culture stuff. Did you know Cousin Rock brought all of his music cards to the party? Rob uh, got sucked into the upside down. He's gone again. <laughs> uh, the Cavaliers must be losing. Yeah, he's just he just threw his TV across the room. His wife is like, "Gather yourself, Rob. Gather yourself." Hmm. <laughs> Are you a March Madness guy, Steve? I have not been keeping up with college no, basketball. I haven't followed any college basketball. You know, I do a bracket for fun at work. People will hand out, "Oh, do a bracket." And it's just kind of like, okay, I got to pick a couple favorites. I got to pick a couple underdogs and that's usually how it works. <laughs> but I, I don't, uh, you know, follow it that much. I remember Christian Leitner on Duke and the Fab Five freshmen in Michigan. Oh, yeah. I had a Michigan starter. <laughs> I mean, I remember some people after that, but, you know. Christian Leitner on Duke was the same year that Shaq was at LSU. Yeah, those were good times. And Alonzo Mourning was at Georgetown. That was back when players stayed in college. And, Phoenix you know, hates. Like, Phoenix says he hates Christian Leitner. It was a Christian Leitner. Remember when he hit that turnaround shot? Yep. <laughs> like seconds left. Who was that against? Was it like, against like Kentucky or somebody? I don't know who it was. Like, I can't remember who it was against. But that could be why Phoenix Rising hates Christian Leitner. It's the only thing I can think of. I don't know what is going on with my internet tonight. Luca's going to end up like Clyde, Dr Clyde the Glide Drexler. Woof. <laughs> it was Kentucky, so I was right. Uh, Luca's av averaging I more than remember, Jordan. I remembered that. Luca's averaging more than Jordan, like prime Jordan, you know, like points per game. I'm not Come saying. On, don't, even be, don't even compare I'm not the eras, man. He's prime defense. Jordan. Hey, yeah, no one's played any defense. Everyone just left the stream. He's not Michael Jordan. He's not, he's not Michael Jordan. Everyone just freaked out. <laughs> Including me. Yeah, Steve just lost it. I'm about to leave like Neo. Yeah, we thought that uh, you threw your TV. We thought the Cavs just lost on a buzzer beater and you threw your TV across the room. Nah, I went easy. Oh, okay. You guys, oh, you're going to the Canton Show this Sunday, Splenda. You going to the Canton Show, Rob? Is that near you too? Yeah, that's my local show. Are you going to that one? Uh, yeah, I should be good. I missed my one last weekend because I was sick. All right, boys, should we wrap it up here pretty soon? Since Neo is sick, I'm sick, and your internet's my broken. Internet's sick, yeah. The upside down. Anyone got Kurt's, Kurt's card care for my internet? Yeah, Kurt's card care uh, needed. Well, he he's going to branch out after all this all this publicity. He's going to be doing all sorts of things, selling T-shirts. Should we wrap it, Steve? You have anything that you want to throw in before we before we cut the stream? Any content creators you want to attack? <laughs> no, I haven't created any content. Create. I haven't attacked any content creators. I heard our content sucks. That's what my that's content. What my video to drop today was in response to someone that I didn't even name. So I'm gonna use. I'm gonna make sure to use your thumbnails in my videos when I criticize your content <laughs> i'm just gonna put a picture hey, of daisy daisy's I, gonna be popped and up and to make it clear like i did i don't mind being criticized but watch my content then criticize it right yeah he didn't get, find he just, my thumbnail, find my thumbnail, thumbnail, thumbnail on, a random, on a random youtube search find my thumbnail <laughs> and I, in that thumbnail i happened to have a hood up so i probably looked like 20 years younger and he probably thought i was just like a i thought you were like young or something. flipper or something and um <laughs> you know when you attack me, you attack my viewers, and I'm not down for that. 
Yeah, you brought everybody in. You, you were like, uh, you were like, um, what's the the creature on uh, Stranger Things? The uh, the flave, the whatever, the thing <laughs> with the arms. You're attacking not just me, but all of us. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, we are going to wrap. I think that we did a pretty uh, average job tonight. Uh, but thank you. We had almost, we had over 200 people, and I, I don't know if anyone from IG came over. I think we had a couple, but first time on IG, so hopefully that was good for for those folks. But we will be back in in two weeks to talk about Steve probably being angry uh, at somebody else. I would assume there's probably gonna be some more uh, rage videos that hopefully we can we can kind of pick no through and talk about. No anger. There's a difference between anger and rage and passion. <laughs> passion. I like it. All right, everybody. Thanks very much for joining. Neo, I'm going to cut it before your internet goes out again. <laughs>